Oh my God, Chris, do you realize we're two nerds that are talking about two games that we have played since we're probably, what, 30 years ago? That sounds right. It's a show by Chris and Neil with all great movies. They are the real deal. We watch them all so you don't have to. It's movies that don't suck. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, listeners of all ages, welcome to a new episode of Movies Don't Suck and Some Do. My name is Neil. And I'm Chris. And today we got two, count them, two movies about one of me and Chris's favorite subjects in the entire world. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Games. Games. Because we're gamers. Yeah. Me and Chris actually met. At a D and D game, we did. <laughs> like, yeah, this is this a... is where. So this is going to be really awesome for us. So first, guys, we're going to talk about the Apple Plus movie Tetris, uh, starring Elton John himself, Terry and Edgerton. My name is Elton Hercules John. And I'm an alcoholic. And a cocaine addict. And a sex addict. And a bulimic. I'm also a shopaholic who has problems with weed, prescription drugs, and anger management. Why are you here now? Well, my dealer was out of town. I thought this seemed like a good alternative. I will say, Rocket Man, way better biopic than um, The Human Rhapsody. Like, Hidden Swords above. Way better biopic than Sid and Nancy. Way biopic than The Doors. It's, it's way one of the best ones. It's one of the best than, ones. It really is. It really is. <laughs> I think it, because I think you got to mix the music with the, to you, be the biopic. You, you have to. It's, it's, I, I mean, it, well, the new era of biopic music wise. Yeah. I mean, if you put them all in a pile, I don't think there's. Many that could beat Rocket Man. The Rocket Man's one of the best ones. Like I, I wish that. Yeah, it was just so good. That's all I can say. Yeah. About. yeah. Um. Now, um, I'm gonna need your help. I totally forgot which ones I sent you. Miles um, Miles Barrow played. Yes, Miles Barrow is in this as well. Hey, you're the girl who took over life support. Yes, but I can't do anything about the water. Or hey, the, um, hey, no, they they gave me your old job, waste management. So. Thanks for that. <laughs> Sorry, I didn't mean to saddle you with it. No, no. Hey, <laughs> I mean it. Thanks. I needed a job. I used to work the cryopod bay, so that job's kind of gone. And look, I want to contribute somehow, you know? Even if it means dealing with people's shit. <laughs> you know you're supposed to take the fecal matter to Angus, right? Oh. He uses it as fertilizer. You're also responsible for the gray water and the urine. Yes, yes, of course. I don't want to forget the urine. Yeah. <laughs> That's from the Ark. Okay. You never seen Ark? I never seen the Ark. Where's the I saw uh, the first episode or two, but mm-hmm. then I lost it in the the plethora of things that you had to watch at that time. You oh, know? Yeah, gotcha. And, and, uh, also, I got a clip for okay. And to be re- real honest with you guys, half the people in this show, in this movie, Tetris, uh, all speak Russian and are Russian <laughs> and Soviet actors. Um, so therefore I could not find clips for 90% of yeah. these people like Nikita um, Ephraim, but you get, Oleg... no, no, I, and believe me, I looked, yeah. I looked, it, I tried you, so but hard. But you get Ole Stefan though. Ole Stefan, I found him in, uh, Heartbreakers. All right. Who will favor us with next song? We have a fellow country woman here. Uh, no, I am so... I please, I am so not musical. Please, uh, how about Karobachka? I know there isn't a Russian alive who doesn't know Karobachka. Yeah, and um, that yeah, was that's, good I, pull, man. <laughs> good pull. Um, yeah, and then, um, anyway, so then, um, there is a one called, uh, and then the one person I did get who mm-hmm. is one of my favorites. Did I pull? Did I pull from Captain America this time? I feel like no. I you didn't. pulled from a a different movie. Uh, you pulled from like two show with Jeff Daniels, I think. 
for Tubby Jones? Oh my gosh, yes. So I, I pulled from a different movie because I it's so hard for me not to think of him as Dr. Zoloff now and yeah. uh in Captain America. See, I, so I see him I, different. I, I see him as, very hard not to do that. I see him as Dobby. <laughs> oh just, Dobby! <laughs> I forgot his Dobby. But here he is, the one, the only, uh Toby Jones. It's illogical to suppose there's only one killer. The clutters were tied up. To tie them up, he'd have to put his gun down. Once he put the gun down, the clutters would run for the hills. I don't believe I know who you are. Or what. <laughs> <laughs> I'm from out of town. What's your paper? Ladies Home Journal. <laughs> oh, I'm not a reporter. I'm a writer. May I see your press card? Good heavens, I don't carry any such thing. But I do have a passport back at my hotel room. Would you like to come back and look at my little picture? Yes. <laughs> good pull. It's a good one, dude. I'm trying to forget where what I pulled that from. Yeah. Sure. Uh, I know it's him. In, oh, infamous, infamous. Infamous. Yeah. Infamous. Um, yes. And oh man, I love freaking Toby Keith. Uh, uh Toby Jones. <laughs> Toby I mean, Keith. I, Toby <laughs> Keith. Uh, Toby <laughs> Keith. No, no, no. no. Sorry, Toby Keith. Um, uh, I mean, I love this bar and all that stuff, but it's not the bar I'm going to. So Tetris, of course, being one of the top selling video games of all time, mm -hmm. you know, period Tetris, we got to go to what the top selling tabletop game. Oh, yeah. of all so, I mean, time? The, the one that started it all really, you know, the like one that started it all at least, uh, Dungeons and Dragons honor amongst three starring the one the only you might know him as captain kurt but there's 10 other million ways everybody knows him because he's one of the chris's yeah it's chris pine i'll forgive you darwin i should i appreciate that man if i needed your car me and my brothers were one about the law i would have kid you to get it too would oh hell yeah we just at the wrong place at the wrong time. So don't feel so bad, Chief. Oh, damn. All right, then. You know, up here in heaven, it's beautiful. Really? I'll see you up here someday. You think so? I know so. Dude, so that's a very young Chris Pine from Smoking Aces. Which, Smoking Aces. Which is doesn't yeah. get its due, man. It's a, it's a, it's a unsung like classic to me. Yeah, it, to me I think it's like one of those cult movies yeah. that need to find another cult, yeah. but yeah. needs to find the movement. Yeah. Smoking Aces, I think it was a really good movie to me. All right. Also in this movie, you know him, you love him. Every single person loved him so much. That the show he was on pretty much got canceled after he was no longer on it. <laughs> Ray J. Gene Paul. There was attraction, certainly. At least on my part. But Miss Bridgerton thought me presumptuous, arrogant, insincere. All fair, really. And I thought her a prim young lady barely out of leading strings. Not to mention the sister of my best friend. And so romance was entirely out of the question for both of us. But in so removing it, we found something far greater. We found friendship. You see, Miss Bridgerton and I have been fooling all of Mayfair for quite some time. We have fooled them into thinking we are courting. And really, all along, we simply enjoyed each other's company so much we could not stay away from one another. To meet a beautiful woman is one thing, but to meet your best friend and the most beautiful of women is something entirely apart. And. It is with my sincerest apologies, I must say, it took the prince coming along for me to realize I did not want Miss Bridgerton to only be my friend. I wanted her to be my wife. So it's Reggie John Page from Bridger Bridgerton, right? So Right. Bridgerton is the, I mean, like, Have you season watched one it? was amazing. I haven't but watched like, it. I tried I season about two. It. Yeah, I watched, what, season one of Bridgerton? You didn't? I didn't. I hadn't seen it yet. Everyone talks about it, though. Yeah, season one of Bridgerton, great. Uh, I don't know if they made another season or not. And to be honest, I didn't care because I knew he wasn't in it. And he was the whole he was the whole reason. Like he was like he, you know, the scene was his. And of course, the one, the only. We know him so well 
as the man everybody wanted, the Englishman that everybody wanted to be in love with. Everybody from Bridget Jones's diary to four men, four four weddings. And, and you're, you're forgetting Notting Hill. Come on, dude. Notting Hill. <laughs> yeah. mm. Failure to launch. Oh, wait a minute. No, that's Matthew McConaughey. But anyway, yeah. uh, the heartthrob, of the, one of the heartthrobs of the 90s and early 2000s, the one, the only, Hugh Grant. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm sorry to drag you from your delicious desserts. Uh, there are just one or two little things I feel I should say as best man. This is only the, the second time I've, I've ever been a best man. I, I hope I did the job all right that time. The couple in question are at least still talking to me. <laughs> I, I'm, unfortunately, they're, they're not actually um, talking to each other. The, the, the divorce came through a couple of months ago. <laughs> but uh, I'm assured it had absolutely nothing to do with me. Apparently, Paula knew that Piers had slept with her younger sister before I mentioned it in his speech. <laughs> the, the, the fact that he slept with her mother came as a surprise, but um, I think was incidental to the nightmare of recrimination and um, violence that became their two-day marriage. Yeah. That's... So, that is Dungeons Dragons. No, you forgot one person. That, did I get somebody else? Michelle Rodriguez, dude. Oh, I did. I did do Michelle Rodriguez. Michelle Rodriguez, everyone. If you <laughs> die, I die. I'm not ready to leave this place yet. This moment is still ours. I remember everything. I remember it all. It's about time. <laughs> Was it F9 or F8? One of the F ones. <laughs> you which one it is. Dude, I'm just going to say I'm so glad it's um, <laughs> Fast and the Furious is coming to it. Me too. <laughs> we're going to have to see the last one. I see FX, you and I. Oh, yeah, we're going to see it. We're yeah. going to see it all. All 10 of them yeah, yeah. in a row. I remember when we had to do the newest one, I had to go watch all of them up to that point. I was like, fuck, <laughs> seven movies. Yeah, I, I, a whole lot of car racing. But Michelle Rodriguez, one of the greatest actresses that's done it her way the whole time while being in Hollywood. You got to give her mad props. Yeah, she's, that. I mean, she plays a character that everyone needs, you know? She's badass. She's a barbarian, man. Let's do it. She's an every freaking movie that she plays is she she just she her part is perfect yeah. all right so that's dungeon dragons honor amongst these and there's a bunch more actors in that movie we'll talk about that later in the podcast mm -hmm. but now chris tell everybody where they can get us you can find us on movies don't suck that network facebook dot com slash movies don't suck podcast we're on twitter mts podcast we're on instagram mts pod we're also on uh, patreon patreon's conscious movies don't suck you guys go to w2m net dot com w2 number two m as in mary net dot com uh we are uh part of the network they distribute our podcast to the people so uh check them out they got all kinds of cool shit on there um you guys can go to bonfire.com search me zone suck and something you'll find shirts like the one neil is wearing right now and other stuff he's made uh and if you guys want to send us an old-fashioned email if you guys are what it's like that send us an email at movies don't suck podcast at gmail.com or info movies don't suck dot net and where do you find podcasts? You can find movies that don't suck and something to do. Neil, what do we do for small businesses? For small businesses, no matter who you are, where you're at, let us know. We'll be more than happy to inform you. We'll be happy to promote you. In fact, a small business that kind of came became a bigger business <laughs> we're going to promote right now mm -hmm. because, Chris, it's that time of year, the time of year that we all rejoice we pray to the gods above and say, this is why we started a movie podcast. That's right, folks. It is now time for the annual Kansas City Panic Fest. Yes, oh, my Panic favorite time Fest. of year. My favorite time of year. <laughs> <laughs> Your favorite time of year. Panic Fest this year will take place in person April 13th to the 19th online virtually April 14th to the 23rd. Now, let me read a little bit to you about what Panic Fest is. Panic Fest was founded in 2013 by Screenland Theater and Downright Creepy. The feast 
enters the fest enters its tenth year. You're going to the tenth anniversary, bro. I'm You're going not, to the tenth anniversary this year. I love Panic Fest. Did you know that though? As one of the top genre festivals in the world, the world this year. We once again, this year, they again provide a virtual option to attendees all over the United States via the event of platform. In addition to their personal festival, which features enhanced safety protocols. The festival is held at the historic Screenland Theater, which is in North Kansas City, just like literally half a mile from downtown. The best theater in Kansas, in, in Kansas City. And one of the best theaters ever. Oh, oh yeah, 100%. Damn, damn, period, period. I, I'll, I'll throw that one out there. The theater has a rich 100 plus year history and features four theaters that range from 250 seaters all the way to 45 seats for smaller modern theaters. Now, this year, the festival continues to show and growth, and they have been lucky enough to receive a recognition for their festival from online and traditional publications. Um, they are gonna. They were last year. They were considered the world's best genre fest movie maker by Movie Maker Magazine. Uh, they're in the top five genre fests in the world. They were Film Freeway's top 50 best genre festivals and Dread Central best horror fest in the world of 2021. These guys are no joke, guys. And if you're go, if you're on our, if you're listening to our podcast, go over right now to our uh, YouTube um, and just take a look. I'm going to pop up scenes. Here's a picture from Panic Fest of 2022 uh, at the Screenland Armor theme, Move Theater. The the theater's packed. Oh, there's the a, no, go, go, go back. I want to show you where I'm in that photo. If you look to the top left. Oh, I can see you. <laughs> I didn't even realize you were in that photo. I totally see you in that photo. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's awesome. I just downloaded it. I didn't even look. I wasn't looking for you. All right. <laughs> Um, also, uh, armor, uh, screenland armor, the, the, the theater there, there's a picture of spider who supposedly we're going to be, uh, interviewing mm-hmm. coming up for his new movie, uh, bury the bride. Yeah. Bury the bride. With him bury and Chris, the bride. And Chrissy Fox. And Chrissy Fox. Yeah. And then on top of that, I mean, the theater, if you can, the, God, some of the gorgeous, theater pictures so when it's empty, it is just one of the beautiful little bars theaters and also they do have a virtual experience what i'm showing a couple pictures of right now where you can go watch movies and it's like you have a little avatar and mm-hmm. you walk around it's, you can play games it's, in there it's you can fun. look at trailers it's fun it's really cool yeah. just to walk around and play in so um i'm telling you right now panic fest um 2023 you can get all the information you want like if you can get, you know, viewings at home, what you if you can't make it to Kansas City to get it, but if you can get tickets and you're in Kansas City, you can do it. You can get that information at panicfilmfest.com. That's P A N I C F I L M F E S T dot com. Or you can go to panicfest uh Facebook.com backslash panic film fest. And I am telling you guys. Um, last year we had a blast reviewing some of these movies yeah. and, uh, I can't wait to see what we get thrown at. Cause, um, two of the movies that are popping my head right off the top is Algoria from yeah. a spider. Yeah. And, and then, um, when the screaming starts, <laughs> there's another movie and I can't think of it now too. That's like, it's there in my head. I know, uh, um, crabs we did out waters creep, creeped you out. Um, yeah. <laughs> Oh, I'm sorry. It was, was, wait it was a minute. Was the, the strip, was the one in the strip club? Oh, the, oh, dude, that's reviewer. Reviewer. Oh, that was not the. That was not. That was just the regular. Yeah, that. But, yeah, yeah, but I, I talked to the cast and reviewer in that last year. Because, oh yes. Okay. Yeah. Yes. So you talked to the cast, but I didn't get to see it till later. But yeah, yeah. reviewer was a good one too. Yeah. yeah. So, guys, literally, I'm seriously. If you're a movie fan and you're listening to us, and you know we're movie fans, Panic Fest, be a part of it. Get ready for it. Yeah, we'll have we'll if have not, extra we'll do some extra content this this month with Panic Fest. Uh, we're literally gonna have so much extra content. It's gonna we're gonna smack it in your fucking mm-hmm. face so get, hard. Get ready. It, it, you're gonna see it everywhere. You're gonna see us doing stuff. Our our wives are already like fuck you. Oh yeah, we is tired of it. Stop talking. <laughs> yeah. tired of it. And you haven't even seen a movie yet. I know. <laughs> <laughs> you haven't seen one fucking movie. Yeah. All right, <laughs> let's get to it. Let's uh, talking about movies. Let's talk movies. Okay, let's talk the Tetris. The Tetris. Um, d- 
directed by John S. Baird. John S. Baird has directed such things as Stan and Ollie, uh, Filth. You remember Filth with that, from that movie with, uh, with um, God, what's his face? I, I'm sorry. Filth with uh, James McAvoy. He plays that dirty cop. Oh, on James the, McAvoy. Yes, yeah, that, movie, that movie makes you feel fucking dirty. This one does. Though. Uh, this stars the uh, amazing Taron Edgerton. My name is Elson Hercules John. Also, the stars Miles Barrow. Uh, I'm sorry, Terry plays Hank Rogers. This stars Miles Barrow as Dennis Jackson. Hey, you're the girl who took over life support. Also, uh, uh, sorry, Oleg Stefan as Nikolai Bel- Belkov. All right. Uh, also, and Toby Jones as Robert Stein. It's illogical to suppose there's only one killer. It also stars uh, Nikita Efremov as Alexei Pajanov. Mayor Huff is Tracy. Rick Yoon plays a part as bank manager, but they never say what bank manager he is. They just say bank manager. Uh, they got uh, Ayane Nagabuchi as Kimmy Rogers. They got, uh, dude, there are tons of people in this, but I can't see a lot of their names. So why don't we just move on to the storyline for this one? <laughs> you can't see a lot of their names. Oh, that's so fucked up. Usually I'm the guy that has that problem. <laughs> All right, Textures. An enterprising game developer risks everything in a race to outmaneuver delicious insiders to negotiate a deal with the Soviet Union bureaucrats for the international licensing rights to what would eventually become one of the most recognizable and widely played game in history. Let me go ahead and question you. Uh, have you ever played Chester so much you can't like it's in your head and you can't get it out of your head like in your head all you see is just blocks falling down what i i, I played a lot of tetris and so i put it so often that i would have like yeah you, know. you mean have you ever early in the movie when hank talks about when he sleeps he can still see the tetris pieces <laughs> oh, okay, yeah. this is actually a real phenomenon called the tetris effect and yes chris i have had a tetris effect i just stop playing it so i can get rid of it <laughs> like like, like yeah. <laughs> Have you played Tetris since you watched this movie? Uh, yes, actually, I have. I, on um, on the Switch, they got this thing called Tetris Ninety Nine, where it puts you online. You play Tetris against everyone else, and if you're the last one standing, you're the winner. And so, I've been playing a lot of Tetris. And, you know, since I just switched, you know, Doctor Mario, but it's always Tetris to me, and Tetris is amazing. Da 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 da. I so, like this one, Ben. I like this one better because it's the original oh, yeah. box. I remember that's the original box from Texas. Anyway. So did you have a, um, you had a Game Boy with yeah. Texas on it? Oh, dude, yeah, I did. <laughs> I did. Uh, that, I, I was, my mom, um, God bless her, um, you know, whatever year that was. Uh, I don't know if she was married to someone or not. I can't remember. Um, but um, she... Uh, well, I mean, she had a couple husbands before yeah, yeah. she. My my mom has like like um, seven. Had seven of them. So. Yeah, yeah. So, um, so anyway, um, she worked hard to make sure I was one of the first. Like, I think I was like one of the first kids on the on the block, in my trailer court growing up mm-hmm. that had the Game Boy. Nice, nice. And uh, to say. That because we lived in a trailer that sometimes didn't have power. Yeah, uh, and we <laughs> should batteries to play Game Tetris. Boy. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I had a Game Boy, and this is before uh, rechargeable batteries. I yeah, think, yeah. too, because I went through so many batteries. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, man, uh, what did you think of this movie? I love the fact that it became like it was an espionage movie. It was like it a spy thriller, right? The, the, yeah. like a spy thriller it had a very 80s feel to it because you know not in the 80s every bad guy was russian you know so like all the bad guys in this are russian you know what i mean and um oh we kind of went through this thing back then called the cold war yeah, yeah. i don't you remember yeah, that yeah. yeah so uh it's kind of like how now all the bad guys are um you know like um have turbans on their head yeah. like you know they don't even tell you where they're from anymore they just have turbans on their you're, head you're like, like oh they're that <laughs> yeah i get it okay and that's that's definitely anyway. not it's definitely a bad thing that hollywood does when they generalize people like, yeah 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 generalization of hollywood has always been a problem yeah but this one was super fun and of course we we can a lot of the stuff in this probably didn't happen but it doesn't make it not a good movie. It's a very fun. Movie. Actually, actually, um, there is a fact that I did not uh, add to this mm-hmm. that um, 
there is certain scenes, yes, that they added for, you know, dramatic effect, mm-hmm. like the car chase. Yeah. We'll, we'll, well, I'll point that one out. Because this ain't really ruining the movie. Yeah. It's just there's a car chase that happens. That didn't happen. But the uh, the original two guys, um, Hank Rogers and Alexi, um, I'm not going to try to pronounce that last name. <laughs> <laughs> Hank and Alexi. <laughs> yeah. Pajinov. Um, Pajinov. Yeah. Yeah, um, th- those two actually said that the things that occurred in this movie actually did occur, like how they met, how um, they became friends, and a-, a lot of how the government, the U.S., the USSR government, was playing each other off of each other. Like yeah. there's a certain scene that shows that. Oh, it gets, and, it uh, gets tense, man. Actually, did it's very huh? tense in this part of this movie. Like, like I was, I mean, I was. This is a fun movie. This is not like a a shitty movie. Yeah. You know? Yeah. This is one of those movies that I was just like, uh, we all know Texture Scott made. Yeah. We all know it. But at some point in this movie, I forgot it got made. I was like, (laughs) damn, everyone's going to (laughs) die. I want Texture Scott. It's like, did, did, wait a minute, did the Russians put out Tetris? <laughs> like, was this the USSR that put it out? Do you remember the, did do it, you, did Tetris fund the Cold War? Yeah. Like, Do you remember you what, know, like, what the tagline for it was? From Russia with fun? Do you remember that? Oh, I totally forgot about <laughs> yeah. that. Oh, my gosh. Um, but uh, the, Terry Anderson played Hank Rogers, and he was great as that. Everyone in this was acting was fantastic. Like, like right away, I was... N- not at one point was I never like not buying their character. You know what I mean? Right. And, and then, um, Taron Edgerton uh played somebody that was stressed out mm-hmm. really well. Yeah. Like he came into this role like he he wasn't trying to be you know super fancy or anything like that. You could just really tell that it, it just it seemed like the whole movie he was really stressed. <laughs> <laughs> like like the whole movie of Texas is just like. He felt like, because at first it was kind of like he just thought, oh, I'm on a normal business transaction. I'm doing a normal thing. And no, all of a sudden, all of a sudden it just became like, he was like, oh, shit. I think maybe I got a, a little over my head here. <laughs> maybe, maybe, uh, maybe I didn't realize exactly what I was getting into when I came to the Soviet Union. This seems like a, to, like I said, a very 80s movie. Both the movies I feel like this week have like a, a very throwback feel to them, and that's not a slag on it at all. I mean, there are a lot of shitty 80s movies. There are lots of great ones, too. And I get this sort of feeling that this one, too, sort of like, the, like there, no, there's embellishment, but I was. I was thrilled by this movie. I thought it was really fun. I, you know, like I had a good time watching it and it, it could have been awful. It could have been boring as fuck, but they did the right things to this to make this go down pretty smooth. I thought. Yeah. Like it, it was one of those movies that, um, you, you won't like watching it. You're not going to get mad at it no mm-hmm. matter what, mm-hmm. uh, at the end of the movie, um, everything, it, it's like one of those movies that you go on this, this car chase of a ride with them. Um, you you see what's going on. It, it's two hours, and you, you go on this roller coaster with them. Mm-hmm. And by any means, I don't remember a part in this movie where it was slow. Yeah, I don't either. I, I was like, there was. I, I was watching a two hour movie, and it was a solid two hour movie. Yeah, where well, I was, was, I was one, engaged the whole time. You know. Yeah, there's not a part in this movie where I looked up the clock and thought. Oh shit! How much longer is this movie? Yeah, I, I didn't look you know, at like, my phone or anything like that. <laughs> like, no, that's and that's like, a, that's problem when it comes it, to movies at home. Like sometimes you're like, fuck when this shit over, and you're like, oh, I have a text message. Let me te- check that out. <laughs> but uh, yeah, and, and that's the thing. You don't want to be, you know, if a movie is two hours long, you don't want to be like, hey, I, I, uh, why am I watching a two hour movie? Yeah, you know, yeah. <laughs> if you get to a two hour movie and you're like, oh shit, didn't even know this was a two hour movie. Like that's that's when you know yeah. that's when you know you won. And so yeah, I guess it's check out Tetris on uh, Apple Plus, and after that, watch Ted Lasso or or uh, or the Shrinking if you're so on that app. Yeah, dude. It, like seriously, if you get Apple Plus, and I mean, I'm not an Apple fan whatsoever. I don't even own a MacBook. I don't mm-hmm. own an iPhone. Nothing like that. Yeah. So I'm not, you know, I'm not the guy to be sitting here like Apple. Yeah. No, I don't even know. Um, but Apple Plus really does have a lot of good shows and movies. Uh, dude, Ted Lasso, not, Shrinking, Severance is great. Severance is fantastic. And 
Tetris. Tetris is a great movie. <laughs> and so uh, I think you guys should. I think you guys should definitely check this out. And drinking you, is great. Oh, I dude. can't believe you don't like that as no, much as uh, I do. I, I just started watching it, and thank you for like for turning me on to it. Uh, shrinking yeah. great. Watch Severance if you can. Watch Severance. So let's get some quotes okay. and uh, get a rating <laughs> and move on. All right. All right. Quotes from Tetris. So uh, go didn't go as planned, did it? It's a combination of tetra, the Greek word for four, and the word tennis. This game isn't just addictive. It stays available. Partners make us great. That's why Mario has Luigi. Zelda has Link. That's why Mike Tyson has that guy whoever he punches <laughs> out and punches out. Yeah, Atari and you now. Yeah, Atari. And that, and you know how much we hate those motherfuckers. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry will not work in our court system. I don't have rights to receive money for my game. That's criminal. No, that's communism. Mm -hmm. uh, I basically Eddie Van. I'm basically Eddie Van Halen. Love that one. Life is hard. We deserve our little celebrations. Good ideas have no borders. You're a foreigner trying to buy Russian property. You guys are the kings of cliffhangers, I swear. <laughs> I'm trying to build a life for us. We already have a life. Running your life was easy. Cross me again, and it will no longer exist. Once you let... Once you let capitalists through the gates, they will never leave. No, it is not time for your American emotion. Is this because I called you a whore? And now is a good time for American emotion. All right, man. I'm on uh, my score. And this is 3.9. It was fun. It was fun. Yeah. To, it was um, this. Yeah, I, I'm right with you on that. Um, I'm going to give it a four. I thought it was really good. I, I really like the um, playmanship between uh, Nikki I, uh, Ephraimoff, and uh, Taron Edgerton, like the Hank and Alexi. Um, Miles played a great asshole, uh, Dennis Jackson. And Toby was just right in that good spot where he always is, where he's just like a little weird, a little strange. Loved it. So yeah, uh, that's Tetris, guys. You get to go on F plus and watch it. How about how about how about uh, what the Rotten Tomato scores? Are? I was about to get to that. Uh, I'm on RottenTomatoes.com. What's the audience <laughs> score for Tetris? I believe the Rotten Tomato score of Tetris from the audience will be your mom. How'd you know that? No, I'm just kidding. Um, it'll be. Is she watching? By the way, <laughs> she's not watching. No, nobody. Uh, the, we have like up to nine watchers at one What's point. Up, guys, jump off! They all jumped off. Yeah. Now, now we're down to one. Uh, anyway, um, <laughs> so anyway, um, definitely gonna have to go with eighty-seven percent, ninety percent from the audience. Really? Yeah. So, nice. what's was, was the crazy consensus of Tetris? On on red tomatoes. Oh my gosh! Um, I'm going to have to say seventy three, eighty two percent certified fresh. Really? Yeah. And the census is Greeks and census is while it's nowhere near as addictive or as fast paced as the game, Chester's offers a fun, fizzy amount. Account of the story behind the eight bit classic. So yeah, it's a, it's a fun movie. It's it pops. It's keeps you. Are there. you a fun movie? I think so. I, I'd like to think that uh, my life would make a fun. Actually, I might make a fun movie. Maybe I don't know. <laughs> Nothing yet. Uh, we still got time. So that's that Tetris, guys. Check that on Apple Plus. It's worth your time. In my opinion, I think Neil agrees. 
So 3.9 for me, 4.0, and then uh, fuck where Tony says because it's you and I. So fuck yo mama. <laughs> I think it's what? I think it's time for news, pal. You ready for news? Or you news? Me? What are you talking about? This is the movies don't suck and some of them news. I'm gonna read stuff to Chris. He's gonna like it, or I'm gonna drive to Kansas City and kill him. I mean, you can make it here, right? Uh, you'll be here in four hours, I think. So, gives me time to get away. Three hours. Oh, you. Oh, I forgot how you drive. <laughs> you forgot, Chris. Yeah. Anyway, let's start this up with some lightheartedness. Mm-hmm. So, a movie that's came out yesterday is already projected to make 120 million dollars this weekend, which is Super Mario Brothers. Wah, wahoo! Uh, the movie. Yeah, yeah. It's already pro- uh, it's all uh, good job. <laughs> <laughs> I, I heard what you did there. I heard what you did there. I, I do I do agree, Mario. Um so. so everybody in the entire world that made fun of Chris Pratt, he got them all back. Yeah, apparently people really like his voice in this one. They think it's it works out. Yeah, well, no, 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 no. That's not how I got them all back, sir. That's I, not how I got them back. What? If you remember five days ago, it was a little holiday we all like to call April Fool's Day. Oh. Chris Pratt went to Twitter and Instagram and posted a picture of Mickey Mouse saying that he (laughs) was now cast as the voice. uh, Proud to share that I will be the lead voice in the upcoming film adaptation of Disney's Mickey Mouse. Get ready for the hit big screens in 2025. (laughs) And of course, people were livid. And then they they, they, they didn't pay attention to their fucking calendar. It's, it's, and it's just so funny because it's the internet, and you can just put a picture of a beer, and people be like, "That's not a beer." So what I was like, like I first I'm always like, "Fuck, man!" Everything every day is gonna be, could be considered just bullshit. <laughs> I'm not gonna read any news today. Didn't get, have a feeling about it. You know what I mean? yeah all right cool all right now let's move on the oscars seek to boost theaters with new rule for streaming films to be eligible for nominations cool so if you remember the old rule was you could you played your movie for one week in the theater and it can be nominated what's the new rule I'm rereading it. I forgot. <laughs> I thought you were going to build more new rule. I, I read it earlier, and then I just... Uh... It's a lot of stuff, man. Right. Lot of Rather stuff. than outright snubbing films that stream, there is a new proposal from Academy CEO Bill Cram. The films now need to play in theaters in 15 or 20 of the top 50 markets in the U.S. to be eligible for nominations. Okay. I'm, I'm, I'm down with that. I like... Uh... I mean, you and I were big proponents of a theater watching experience, so. I, 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 yeah. Yeah. So, you know, hey, if you want the movie to be, I mean, come on, Knives Out, like, you know, The Glass Onion. We, I saw that in the theater. Yeah, you, you and I saw, the we saw Glass Onion in the theater, both you and I did. Yeah, we both saw it in the theater, and it was only out a week. Yeah, we loved it. <laughs> we fucking loved it. I mean. There's something about being in a theater yeah, with a bunch and, of people you don't know. And so we're having this communal experience with everyone enjoying a movie. But again, I'm old. What the fuck right. do I know? What do I know? Um, Aquaman mm-hmm. and the Lost Kingdom. Mm-hmm. Your favorite movie of all time. Uh, your favorite movie series. Um, no, no. Uh, is I, now I, getting I, a five day jump on the holiday season. So when's it coming out? Instead of coming out on Christmas, it will now come out December 20th. So it gets a five day. So then it can collect money before Christmas to and then get the boost on Christmas, making it so it could be the biggest one of the week. Are you excited for it? Uh, Head of State, which is the new movie. With... Yeah, I mean, I, I like all comic book movies until I see them, and then I bitch about them, <laughs> just like everybody else. Um, on a movie called Head of the State, which we've already... Uh, 
mentioned before with John Cena and Idris Elba on Prime Video's uh, movie. Uh, Prika Cobra is Jonas, uh, joins the movie. Prika Cobra is going, uh, she was on, um, uh, what, what, what she was on the what was that show? The uh, Good Place, mm-hmm. she was on the Good Place, stuff like that. And so she will be jumping in the lineup with I, Idris Elba, and um, yeah, so hey, way to go for her! Yeah, woo, woo. interesting, fun, yay. It's I tied yourself in freaking John Cena. I'm going to see it. <laughs> Talking about Apple, Apple has a dark uh, dark comedy coming out about confronting past demons. Uh, the movie is going to be called Outcome, a dark comedy about a damaged Hollywood star confronting his inner demons, starring Jonah Hill. Okay. And Keanu Reeves. I want to see that badly. Like that, that's something I want to see right now. <laughs> as soon as you see, as soon as you say Reeves and Jonah Hill, like, yeah, is yeah. there anybody else in this damn movie? I don't even care. <laughs> no, I, I don't even see anybody else. Okay, so that's all I need, though. I don't, I don't need you to tell me who else is in this. I'm already in. He, he use it, Reeves and yeah. So Hill? hey, I'm in. Yeah. Got it. Person going through some shit. <laughs> hey, you know that guy, Donald Glover? Remember him? Of course I do. He's Childish Gambino now, right? Uh, yeah, well, I mean, he, he no, that's just rapping. Okay, okay. Well, um, um, well, I mean, he hasn't been around for like five years now. I, I mean, I love Donald Glover. I watched Atlanta big time. Atlanta ended just no, last no, no, season. No. I'm not saying he's a bad actor, bro. I'm just saying, what has he done lately? Atlanta. And oh, he, he's got a show. Okay, that's why. That's why. <laughs> that's why I don't see him anywhere. Um. Well, he has one hundred percent signed on for the community movie. Yes, I know it, dude. I'm so excited. I cannot wait for that fucking movie. I'm a big fan of Community. You should be too, I, right? You watch Community, right? I, I'll go watch Community soon. Uh, you know what? I'll put that as my next background. It's show great. To watch. It's great. You'll love it. All right. You'll love it. I, I think you... I actually need a background show. I just ended. I just finished. Uh. What did I just finish? Well, I just finished Picard. I finished The Last of Us. I finished, um, I don't know. We'll, we'll oh, I got, I got Lee to start watching Ted Lasso, um, by the way. I finally got Lee to start watching Ted Lasso. Oh, dude, can't <laughs> wait. Guess you get to the end where he dies? <laughs> yeah. No, we're just about to start the second season today. So, I've seen it all, though. Donald Glover is also in talks to return as one of his favorite, as one of his favorite, Famous roles. Okay. Lando Clarissian. Okay. I mean, I would it be like a Disney Plus show or something. I don't know, but who cares? <laughs> I'm down. Uh, Marana Baccarin is back uh, as Vanessa in Deadpool 3. Okay. We all knew that yeah. was going to happen. Mm-hmm. Dan Aykroyd has been trying forever to get Jim Belushi to try to do a Blues Brother movie. They did that. If you don't know, Jim Belushi and Dan Aykroyd does tour the United States as the Blues Brothers. Um, they were here in Tulsa. Oh yeah. One time it was uh, they did they did a they did a show and then on top of that um they did a what else? They did uh Jim Belushi had a weed company, he has a weed company. Dan Aykroyd has a vodka company. I think it's vodka. Yeah, he does vodka. Yeah, Crystal Skull. Yeah, yeah, Crystal yeah. Skull mm-hmm. vodka mm-hmm. is Dan Aykroyd. So, why not, guys? Come on. Why not? Just try it. Give, Jim Belushi has more. a weed company in Tulsa? Or just a weed company in general? He has a weed company everywhere. Wow, that's interesting. I didn't know that. Okay. Uh, Chloe Zhao. Mm-hmm. Chloe Zhao. Is going to be directing a gripping tale about William Shakespeare's wife, Angus. Okay. <laughs> Eternals and No Man Land director Chloe Zhao is circling Hamnet, an adaptation of Maggie O'Farrell's novel about Shakespeare's wife. Well, she is a Oscar winning director, so uh, that, that it, it might have something to it, you know? Like she, yeah, like, made the force be with you. Yeah. Right? Yeah. 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 Uh, ballerina, the John Wick spinoff, yeah, will be coming to theaters as a. Now it is slated for June seventh, 
2024. I'm glad that it's next year, not 2025. That's what I got to say. Yeah, no, that's that's a long time to wait. Yeah. Um, Legacy, uh, Superman Legacy will have quite a different tone than the Guardians of the Galaxy movie. See, uh, movies says James Gunn. You're very goes, happy to hear about so that. Much for making these- yeah. Me, me, I'm very happy hearing that. <laughs> I learned so much from making these movies, but it's not like Superman is going to have exactly the same vibe as Guardians movie. It's actually quite different. I think there's a such thing as a superhero fatigue. I get fatigued by most spectacle films, but the grind of not having an emotional grounded story doesn't have anything to do with whether the superhero movies or not. If you do not have a story at the base of it, just watching things bash each other, no matter how clever those bashing moments are, no matter how clever the designs and the, the special effects are, it gets fatiguing, and I think that's very, very real. So, yeah, yeah I know you're excited for Superman Legacy now. You were afraid that he was going to make it all super funny and goofy, like he did for Guardians and and uh, yep. Suicide Squad. So. so let's see what he goes with there. So, what does Robert De Niro, Al Pacino, Anna D. Armas, and Adam Driver all have in common? What's that? They've all been cast in Heat too. Oh, okay, okay. Well, so I know Al Pacino. So now Bobby's in it. Bobby De Niro's, Robert De Niro's in this one, and Adam Driver. I'm into that, dude. I'm into that. Uh, he too. I mean, he. Uh, I'll, I'll I'll see it all day long. He's one of the best, the best heist films of all time. So, all right, Mohana, Mohana, Mohana or Mohana. You know the, uh, the Moana? Is Moana. Moana. Just Moana, not Mohana. Yeah, Mo- Mo- yeah. The the Disney yeah. uh, animated movie about the little girl. Yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah. About uh, bringing this. Money, spirit, the magic of the original. Okay, cool. <laughs> Dwayne Johnson has announced that a live-action reimagining of Disney's animated classic will happen. I don't think it, they need I don't know to... why it's a classic. It's been out like three years. I know. Can you they, call it a they, classic? I mean, it's a good movie, but I don't years. think it needs a live-action at all. At all. But I don't either. I don't think any of these do. I think Disney's just like, hey, we gotta write off taxes. Somehow. And soon they'll start doing Zootopia remake, <laughs> like live action. Talking about live action, uh, Disney's live action Lilo and Stitch remake reportedly found its Lilo in a girl named Mai Kaleo, uh, Kaya Lahoa. Uh, will reportedly play the live action. She's not an actress. She's been cast. She's just really cute, and I hope it all works out for her. <laughs> all right. Uh, Chris, there's going to be a third movie in a series of two that I know you've been looking forward to. Mm-hmm. Yes. The third movie in the franchise is due to start filming this July. The one, the only, Paddington the Bear. Yeah. I know you've been waiting for that. I have a confession. I haven't yeah, seen, never Pad- seen any of them. No, but we I've been trying to get to movies. Like I don't want to watch that right now. I'm like, well, fuck. Because, but I mean, I'm gonna yeah, watch, I haven't seen either. I'm one. gonna watch probably both of them tonight because I'm really excited about Paddington. And uh, if the one thing I learned Paddington two is probably I've heard the best movie of all time. So, if they knew. So <laughs> Fantastic Four. Yeah. Gets a new writer added on in Josh Friedman. If you don't know who Josh Friedman is, he is the co-writer of all the Avatar movies. Oh, okay, great. <laughs> I mean, so, I mean, Fantastic Four is in blue, Avatar is blue, people. Yeah. Hey, okay. you know, right. maybe it'll work. Clint Eastwood has um, reportedly is going to be directing the movie Juror Number 2 as his final movie. I mean, it should, I mean, it should have ended it before Cry Macho, but, you know, whatever. I mean, it's good. I mean, juror number two be good. It's a juror on a murder trial who realizes that he may have caused the victim's death and must grapple with the dilemma of whether to manipulate the jury to save himself or reveal the truth and turn himself in. Just saying, no, hatch your face is curved by the microphone right now. Uh, Jason Momoa's Minecraft movie is going to be released in 2025. Uh, April 4th of 2025. So Minecraft movie 
Yeah. I know you'd be happy about that. I'm, I've never played Minecraft. I'm you play a lot of Minecraft. I don't play any Minecraft. I've never played it once. Or it's good. Saved by the Bells reboot, uh, Josie Tota uh, is joining the Faces of Death remake. No, we don't need to remake that, do they? I have no idea. Like, I'm I'm interested. Like, it just explains what Faces of Death is, mm-hmm. which if you don't know, folks, it was a movie that we all rented at the damn um, – and there's other people in it, too uh, – like um, a girl from Euphoria, a guy from. Um, so maybe it's like a uh, movie about how those movies got made, because they're awful movies. It's I just... don't know. I don't know what it is. The, very little has been revealed happening in the new Faces of Death. The original was, you know, a bunch of death scenes and stuff like that. I don't know. I don't know what it is, but okay, mm-hmm. <laughs> we'll yeah, watch yeah. it. Yeah. Um. Uh, Megan the Stallion has joined an Adam Sandler movie at Netflix. That's all, right. all we get. Okay. That's all the information we get on that. Netflix Transgender Film Center launched Career Development Lab for Trans and Non Binary Filmmakers. This is a 12 week career accelerator fellowship. will support eight creators in film and TV with developing the skills and understanding that navigate their careers in entertainment through workshop, site visits, and a Ten thousand dollar grant. That's pretty cool. Fucking like a. Yeah. Way to go. Way to go, Netflix. Way to go. Get over all these dumb haters and their dumb shooting beer can thing. Yeah. And I don't know what the hell's going on in the world right now. I don't. All right, here's the last two, and I saved these just for you. Oh. And these are from the week. Okay. And I knew these are gonna make you like you might have to turn the, the video camera off and go behind that curtain for a little just, bit. If you know just what I mean. finish so. myself off. Yeah, just, just rip yeah. one out real quick. Right. <laughs> Legendary has bought the rights, and there's going to be a TV show. There's going to be movies, all the above to this. Capcom's Street Fighter has been purchased by Legendary, the film Entertainment. So they, they might actually make planning. this good now. So yes, yes. Um, with Street Fighter Six hitting consoles in June second, this is the greatest time. Um, Street Fighter um, franchise that they are they're gonna the relaunch is not the first. Uh, da, 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 I don't want to read all that shit. I, um, I, I know there's one part in here I read it and I was just like, oh shit, they got some shit coming. Um, but they are going to put out a film. Uh, TV series and cartoons to the masses. So they're going all in. Hopefully they do it justice. Yeah. It's, it's going to be hard. But I mean, we'll see. So, um, you know, there's this one time yeah. we had a conversation. <laughs> and do you know what Gus from Breaking Bad and Kevin Bacon and oh, I'm gonna say her name wrong. Halesley, Halsley, Halsey, top part. Like, Halsey, but, all yeah. have in common. They're gonna be in the new Ty West film, Maxine, the sequel to Pearl. You are correct, <laughs> yeah, yeah. sir. You got the one, the only Kevin Bacon, Gus, and a slew of couple other people are gonna be joining. So now your independent movie is no longer no, an independent it's movie. It's got all these you giant call stars it an in independent it. Independent movie yeah. when Kevin Bacon jumps yeah. on that set. Yeah. And Gene Carlo Esposito and uh dude I, I gotta be honest, I can't fucking wait. I we like, can't wait. Uh, when I see if, 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 I hope Kevin Bacon's a porn director and he says the horrible things the porn director say. I hope Gene Carlo is Gene Carlo Esposito is a porn director does the horrible things the porn director say. I can't wait for Maxine dude. or they're gay porn together. Whoa. Or in their gay porn together. That would be incredible. Yeah, see? You didn't even you didn't even think you didn't even think about that way, did you? I, I didn't. Did. I don't I did. know why I did. I did. All right. But that is the news, Chris. I got it done for you. Let's get her going. That was the movies don't suck and some of them news. I read a bunch of stuff. Chris got happy, then he got naked, and now I can't Chris, come back! Come back, Chris! You ever heard of social distortion? Yeah, I know social D line. You, you like them at all? They're okay. Not very punk man. Looks like I'll probably be working their show. Yeah, they're fun. 
They're coming at Kane's. Oh, Kane's is W. Yeah, Mike Ness is a legendary punk musician, dude. So she did all right. You ready? I don't know why this guy. Why did it? Why would you arrest a man for putting farts in a jar? It just makes no offense. I'm sorry, pal. <laughs> I didn't know that upset you so much. Uh, do you know what we were talking about, right? Hmm. We want Dungeons and Dragons. The Hunter Among Thieves, written by John Francis Daly and Spider Man. And he, John Francis Daly is writing part of the the Gold scene. They wrote things like Spider Man Homecoming, Vacation. They've done a lot of stuff together. They're, uh, do you remember John Francis Daly? He was in the like, Freaks and Geeks, the little kid. He was the main character. Oh, mm-hmm. it's also, mm-hmm. this is uh, written and directed by them. This stars Chris Pine as Edgen. I'll forgive you, Darwin. It also stars Michelle Rodriguez as Hoga. If you die, I die. Uh, Reggie Jean Page as Zinc. Those attractions, certainly. Also, Justice Simon is Smith. Uh, Justin Smith is Simon. You remember him from, uh, from, uh, we saw, we, Justin Simon Smith was in Sharper. He was one of the main characters in that. Uh, Sophia Lewis plays Doric. Hugh Grant plays the evil Forge. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm sorry to drag you from your delicious desserts. Also, Chloe, Cor- Col- Chloe Coleman is Kira. Daisy Head is Sophina. Will Overround is Tobias. Uh, Brian Larkin is Chancellor Norcus. I can keep going on and on, but watch. Go ahead and read the storyline for Dungeons and Dragons to honor um, of the honor among thieves. Two guys sit at a table, one with a 20 sided, <laughs> the other one with a 30 sided. No, I'm sorry. Um, a charming thief and a band of unlikely adventurers embark on an epic quest to retrieve a lost relic, but things go dangerously awry when they run afoul of the wrong person. Yeah, we'll, we'll go with that. Yeah, it's it's a little bit more involved than that, but it's it's that's I mean, I guess basically the cop plot, right? <laughs> like, sure, we'll go with that. Yeah, yeah. Um, it's definitely more involved, but this is a uh, this is the Rare Dungeons and Dragons movie that gets it right. What, Chris? Yeah. Yeah, this is a fun movie. You know what? You know what? Just because you said that, I just realized the picture I have is like of a pub. It was like a have Red Dragon Inn or something. Of, of like very like what you think of when you're playing your first round of D&D, oh, right? Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, let's make it real. Let's make it real. I'm, I'm let's gonna... not do the fantasy part of it. Okay. <laughs> Me too. Okay, yeah, that's what it is. As soon as it loads, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, I, I clicked it. it like five minutes ago, bro. I there's nothing I could do. What? There we yeah, go. Yeah. Yeah. No, no, no. That's not no. that one. No, nobody I know has a castle. Nobody has a castle that I know. We all play with just paper and. <laughs> there we go. Right. A bunch of forty-year-olds drinking beer, writing paperwork. Yeah. Where's the fiends and no Mountain Dew? No castles involved. We don't have no castles. So what? What I mean? I know, right? Yeah. Need the Funyuns and the Mountain Dew, but. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, I I thought this was a fun movie. I didn't think it was necessarily a Dungeons and Dragons movie, but it was a fun fantasy movie. Really? I mean, I see the, I see like, you know. Have you ever read a Dungeons and Dragons fucking story? I have. It's just. Have I, you ever read a Dragons and. St- I have. It's just. Have you ever played Dungeons and Dragons? Of course I've played Dungeons and Dragons, dude. I've been playing. I'm, All I'm, right, Chris. I'm in two campaigns right, right now. Let's go through some stuff. Well, Cult of the Dragon. Earlier on the film, Tree mm-hmm. says definitely down says D&D fans will definitely know yeah, that the Cult yeah. of the Dragon is a cult that is yeah. in the fifth version yeah. of D&D. Yeah, Let's go to Bag of Holding, which came off oh, right yeah. off the back of the bag of There are sounding stones in this. Yeah. is one of the main characters, one of the bad guys. Yeah, okay. Do you want me to go keep going, bro? Yeah, I guess so. Sorry. Yeah, you're right. The Green Flame Blade, the, the okay. Thunder Chad, the okay. Battle Maps, the... um. The Eye of the Beholder. Uh, what was the the uh, the in, uh, tablet the of Awakening. medallion of invincibility? Uh, characters leveling up through the game through yeah. the through the movie. Yeah, that you literally nice. see people leveling up through yeah. the movie. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Like um, uh, the bad guy, uh, not the bad guy, but the good guy that helps him out is based on an of a, a NPC, yeah. a non playable <laughs> character. 
um, which is usually known as Drizzt the Dark Elf in yeah. the D&D world that has been around since 1987. He starts to help you off if you don't know how to write a story. It's one of the first stories. Jesus Christ, I thought you played d and I did dude. play d and I'm in two campaigns right now. I've never, I've never been a DM, though. But that doesn't mean that this movie's not fun. See this right here? See this map? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I see that. Half of this northern region up by up by the Panic Fest part uh, <laughs> on our screen right now is where this movie takes place. Okay. I, I think you're right. Do you know what that map is, Chris? What's that map, Chris? What is that map? Tell me. That's the map that comes with D&D. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> like, like, literally, they tried really hard to get a lot of information there. And what do you think? In fact, one of my... Huh? Do you think they did a good job of pushing in there? What? Do you think they did a good job? They did a good job. Of yeah, running. because I don't think they didn't do too much. They didn't do too much comedy, uh-huh. which I was very happy with. It was still very funny. Over to the still comedy. very funny. When yeah, it was it's funny. still very funny. But I think that was just the fact that um, Chris Pine's amazing. That uh, Chris Pine's in it, and that was just kind of his humor, mm-hmm. which is great because he was. What did what was Chris Pine? What was Chris Pine in the movie? He was a bard. He was a bard. And what do bards do? They play music. They make you laugh yeah. and they entertain. Yeah, yeah, that's true. And um, I think they did a really, really good job in bringing the aura or the feeling of D&D alive, which a lot of the other, I mean, they even made it feel like it's a group of people figuring out what's happening next. So, I, I thought that was really fun. My wife wished that they had interstitials of people throwing dice and like coming to the game, and then like the game would come alive. That's what they did. But I I really liked the uh, I really liked the way you went with it. It was a really fun movie, and like for people who don't know anything about Dungeons and Dragons, they can still appreciate this movie as much as we did. I think. Yeah, and um, another thing that's really cool about this movie too was the fact that it was just like, um, there was so many. What I like D and D wise or whatever mm-hmm. was the fact that it went from like the that the movie was like they would talk about like quests they've done before. Yeah. Oh, before you came along, we did this <laughs> quest once that was like this. Yeah, yeah. And and it was just like that just made me happy. And then one of the happiest points, I'm not gonna say when and where, but. <laughs> All of the 1980s Dungeons and Dragons cartoon characters make an appearance. I'm not going to say when and where. I'm not going to give you that kind of spoiler. But I mean, I mean, they had paladins. They had um, the hanging cities of Duoblin and Duyan, which is part of the Dragon uh, uh, Dungeons and Dragons lore. Uh, I mean, they had. Um, the Hitler Thigh Staff and the Teleportation of Circle. Uh, I mean, that's all, like, they literally, the Red Dragon, the LSD MR. Um, I mean, they literally, are, are you rolling dice during that's the game? Dice. What are you that's doing, my D&D dice. That's my D&D off. Uh, we, we, all, we all got D&D dice that, you know, know each other. <laughs> the Mimic <laughs> Chest, like, literally the Gelatinous Cubes. Yeah, yeah. Um, I mean, like, literally, there was just so many things from D&D. If you are a huge D&D fan, yeah, you'll know this stuff. you're going to go into this movie and you're going to be like, oh, I know that, I know that, I know that. It's like being a comic book movie at a comic book, you know, at a comic book, you know, going to a Marvel movie these days where you can point out things in the corner and stuff like that. There's stuff all throughout this movie. They, they did make this. Uh, there's stuff throughout this movie, like little details. Go ahead. There's stuff like little details throughout the movie that you should be able to pick out. Just in every sort of scene, like, they go through a scene, you be able to pick out something in the other thing. Like, you mentioned the, like, the thing of the rust monsters. I saw that. They're also a birds that are D&D, like, native. They're fighting over stuff. So it's a really funny yeah. movie. Yeah. Yeah. As soon as I saw the birds, I was like, oh, yeah. And, yeah. and like, the theater all turned and looked at me. And I was <laughs> like, because I, I realized I wasn't in, I wasn't in the theater with the people that were my that were that played that game. You said it was a <laughs> like, full theater, though. Right? Was, 
Uh, my well, I mean, it was like Tuesday at two, yeah, you yeah, know, yeah, sure. you know, so it's it, it's not going to be full ever at that point. But um, it was it was do, 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 um, I'd say at least 20, 20 okay. people, which is it's Tulsa. Yeah, we don't even have a million people here, bro. <laughs> yeah. So I mean, like, I, that's pretty good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, my theater was pretty full on a Tuesday, but that says Tuesday is like half off for like movies. So yeah, yeah. I like this and. They don't even need to bring this group back. No, they can as do long this. as as long as they make it feel the same moving along. Mm-hmm. You can just do, you know, D and D, um, you know, Warriors Age or D D and D. You know, you know, like you can go base all this. You can make this a whole freaking thing. Oh yeah, yeah. As as long as you make it a good story. Yeah, and that's and, that, that's important. I think that. They did a good job when it comes to D and D and 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 having that. Well, it's fun for one. I think mm-hmm. it's super fun. I, that's that's the thing I want most out of this movie was to have a good time while watching it. And it was two hours and fourteen minutes. It doesn't feel like it, you know. And you're, I was into it the whole time. And they make all the characters super likable in some way, you know. Yeah, it was it was it was great. I mean, you, I mean, it, it like the um when uh, the Chris Pine character, uh, Sophia uh, Lois as Doric, um, Michelle Rodriguez and Chris Pine played off each other perfectly. They're great. And then um uh, Reg Jean Paul uh, X X X Knock I don't I don't know how to pronounce that <laughs> uh, Justice Smith his character even Hugh Grant's character like right. When everybody came in, everybody played off of each other really well. Um, I, I was, I loved it. I, I, D- Daisy Head, she played a scary witch sorcerer thing yeah, creepy. That, that I was like, oh god, that's gonna be in my nightmares tonight. Uh, one of the things I do want to say about this movie is that it had heart. And you and I tell me how much I love heart. I cried. Mm-hmm. Okay, like once or twice in this movie. Yeah, I mean, it was one of those movies that if you're following it and you're you're going with it, yeah. it it's on a journey. And I, I don't think it was that long of a movie. I remember, yeah, oh, it's two hours and fourteen minutes. There is a mid credit scene. Yeah, mid credit scene. So stay for that. Scene. That's pretty fun. Scene. It's really fun. Yeah, it, it's pretty funny. Or uh, uh, pretty fun. Um, but man, I I liked it. I enjoyed it. Yeah. I um uh, I would see it again. I will see it again when it comes out. Oh yeah, I know I'll, I will. I definitely will see it again before the sequel comes out. And there's gotta be I'll a sequel. Watch the one from two decades ago, and I watched this right after, just so I can still remember how bad that one from two decades ago. <laughs> Fucking killed me. Yeah. All right, let's do some quotes and get the hell on out of here. All right, sounds good. Uh, I'm going to do this without fingers. I think I'm making mittens. Yeah, I'm making mittens. <laughs> You might be surprised. I was not always a thief. What's wrong with my lips? They're too big for, like, your face. (laughs) I've heard that before. You had years to poison her against me. We are going to need a team. (laughs) And when I heard that, I was like, yeah, Yeah. it's (laughs) D&D. Anyway. Uh, yes, a deer. They can blend with all the other deer in the castle. <laughs> yes, a deer. So you can blend with all the other deer in the castle. <laughs> there we go. That's how the line is read. What the hell is that? It's an owl bear. Duh. Uh, of course, I'm, I'm glad that showed up in there, by the way. So it's got to be owl bear. Yeah, show up in the d and It's an owl bear. <laughs> it's like, what do you know? There's so many times I laughed at this movie. <laughs> I was just so excited because I saw things and I knew what they are. And nobody in the theater got it but me. <laughs> Everybody still had a good time. Yeah. Everybody had still had a good time. But we are very different. I like to be out and about and he likes to be, you know, in a vegetative state. <laughs> Just pay it with magic. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I can't. It doesn't like you got something to help us, right? <laughs> I'm like, D&D, I'm like, Hopefully, you roll a 20. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> when you left, I lost my family. I was fortunate enough to find another. What's two plus two? I don't know. I'm bad at math. <laughs> I find irony a blade that cuts who welds it. 
I like that line. Yeah. Uh, can't you just magic us across? <laughs> When they say stuff like that, that reminds me of like yeah. working, actually playing D and D. Like someone's just like, "Oh, well, we can't get over there. Can't you just do some magic?" And uh, get us I, over you there? and I, we also played a system called Fate, which was its pluses and minuses. But yeah, yeah. there was all kinds yeah, of that exactly. shit. Yeah. Uh, can't read any of those. Can't read any of that. <laughs> Are you trying to get away with plot points, or just can't read it? What? No, I literally can't read them. I mean, again. <laughs> Dark theater. theater. Yeah. Um, what are you looking at? A Harper coming up from a slumber. I've never seen a bigger coward. Me? You're under here too. <laughs> <laughs> I am the champion of failures. I lost everything that ever meant to me, and it was all my fault. Oh, I, I'm the champion of all failures. I lost everything that meant anything ever to me. And it was all my fault. You're at your strongest when you think you're at your weakest. So you die a fool or live. Don't know what I wrote. All right, cool. <laughs> you, you think you can tell the difference between a 300 year old wizard and your daughter? <laughs> uh, let's see. Now, as you die. Rest assured, it will be for real. I took a look inside and asked myself, what's going on in there? <laughs> That's it. All right, Neil, what's your score for Dungeons & Dragons Honor Among Thieves? Uh, I, You know what? I'm going to give it a 4.2, and this is the reason why. Mm-hmm. Before you jump on it like a bitch. Because um, you already made some bad no, 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 I like this movie. Whatever the fuck he did. Anyway, <laughs> so uh, the reason why mm-hmm. is because it didn't overuse, but it did use everything from the Dungeons & Dragons universe. So, yes, of course, they, they could have done exactly what you said earlier. We had, like, a group of guys, and each one of them, kind of like, they could have done like a Jumanji kick. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If, if you want to call it that. Mm-hmm. It, you know, or, you know, an individual's playing that character and stuff. But to be honest, I'm glad I don't see Neckbeard 1 and Neckbeard 2. <laughs> uh, nothing against your neckbeard, Chris. Nothing yeah, well, against I your don't neck have beard. a neckbeard. <laughs> you got a neck? What is that? That's your neck. But there's, but there's no hair there. <laughs> anyway, but um, I really thought they did a great job pulling it off i i was happy with it i i um as when it got to the point where me as i'm not i'm not an advanced D player i've played D &D since fifth grade fourth Mm -hmm. grade but i'm not advanced i never hardcore read the books i've never i think i tried dming once which was like the biggest headache in in my life yeah and but i've played it my entire life and for me to be able to catch things that they were doing, that's fucking amazing. That's yeah. for me, a guy who knows at least enough about D and D by, by playing D and D, uh, to see what they were making reference to and stuff like that. And and to be honest, you could tell because again, in a theater full of people that I'm pretty sure never played D and D, um, they were laughing, having a good time. I think it's just a good fantasy movie. You can just chalk this up with one of those good fantasy. My movies. score on this a little bit lower. It's a four point one. It's just one point difference. I had a blast watching this movie. That's what you're going. You go in. You want to have a good time. That's why you play D and D. You want to have a good time. And it had enough references to keep the D and D fans happy, like those hardcore ones, and enough to keep fans who the move people who never even played picked up a twenty side dice to understand and play and watch and enjoy. And that's that's what you need when you put a movie out like this. I'm sure there are some people out there that may think that it should have been more niche, but I disagree. I, I liked every. I thought this was funny. I thought it was fun. I thought it was heartfelt. I thought it was action-packed. And it was a good fantasy movie just by itself. So I'm glad. Mm-hmm. Uh, 4.1 out of this one, I can't wait to see the sequel. I can't wait. I want them to do a bunch of them. Yeah, I, yeah. I want I want all of them naked in my mouth. So, like, 
You know where I am, right? I'm on the uh, red dot. Uh, you're in Kansas County. City, yeah. uh, Overland Park. Uh, you want me to get the address? No, I'm, I'm in Shawnee, but close. Uh, but I'm on yeah, RottenTomatoes.com. What is the audience score for Dungeon Dragons Honor Among Thieves? Um, I got my 12-sided dice, and I'm ready to roll with the wizard and my goblin crew. My friends are coming over to my mom's basement, bringing bunions in the, the Mountain Dew. Dew. Get the Stephen Lynch. I got a big broad sword made out of cardboard, cardboard and, and the stereo's pumping Zeppelin. Zeppelin. It's, it's time of the night, night we turn on the, the black light. Let the Dungeons, Dungeons and Dragons, Dragons begin. begin. Yeah. It's D and D fighting with the legends of yore. It's D and D never, never really kissed a lady before. What's anyway. the audience score for for uh, Dungeons Dragons? Don't know about these. They got to get an eighty three. Has to be at least eighty. It's a ninety four percent. Ninety four. Holy shit! Balls. There's, there's, I mean, with the Christians out there, I thought they, they would all be like, hey, it's worshiping Satan. Is Remember that, Tom um, Hanks played in a movie where everybody got to get possessed by D&D? Anyway. Audience says, Dungeons & Dragons Honor Among Thieves unentertainingly wins action, fantasy, and comedy, all while respecting the source material. Now, uh, what is the Big Bang mean critic score of Dungeons & Dragons Honor Among Thieves? 86. 90% certified fresh. Holy <laughs> fuck. Critics make consist- all the money. Make <laughs> all the money, Dungeons and Dragons. Critics consensus is an infectiously good spirited comedy with a solid emotional core. Dungeons and Dragons Honor Among Thieves offers fun fantasy and adventure, even if you don't know your HP from your OP. So I like this. This is a fun movie. It makes me happy in the buttocks. I think that's the two movies we did. They're both really good. Yeah, that's two movies about games. Of yeah, games that we so, played like a motherfucker because we are just that good. So like, next next week we are doing um, Super Mario Brothers and uh, a, a different one. I don't know what we're doing. And then we'll also be putting out uh, lots of content on Pat Panic Fest. We'll, well, that will be all before Dude, me first. guys, get ready for it. If you download our, our thing and you already know how much we cover the Panic Fest, we are going to be covering the fuck out of the Panic Fest so much. Our rel- our our wives are going to hate us. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah. I've pre ordered my wife several times now. I'm like, look, honey, it's Panic Fest week <laughs> right after WrestleMania week. So, one, she already had to put up with me watching, like, a shit ton of wrestling. And, that's and like- I mean that. Ton, a ton of wrestling, Chris. Remember, remember what I did last. Maybe that's why I couldn't sleep either. Remember what I did last year at this time? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You were, you were out. I was in Dallas, Texas. Yeah, yeah. yeah. For a whole week, watching like sixteen, uh, uh, sixteen or seventeen different wrestling shows over sixty. I, I added about somewhere around sixty-eight to seventy plus hours of wrestling. Yeah, and now's me. So, now it's still me watching. You know, uh, hours and hours of horror movies so yeah I w- i'd be up there watching them with you if you invited me but you didn't, I didn't. um anyway i didn't invite you huh no i told you exactly what it was i know but i couldn't do the without i couldn't pay for everything yeah. i just there yeah, there's no way i'm not that rich <laughs> i didn't pay for you either huh we got press yeah but i i don't have free tickets like you do oh. because they, they only give you passes not me the one pass yeah, you you think I would be the guy that gets I, I asked to. you, I asked them to, but they they, they only do they one. They don't like me, Chris. They just don't like me. And I, you got to tell these motherfuckers, hey, look, it's cool that you give me a pass, but the second guy, he's the one that actually works in media for a real <laughs> living, for a living, Chris. Like literally, I I I I am in charge of social media. For radio stations that have over 2 million followers. We'll figure it out next year, I promise. <laughs> if not, I mean, can we do an interview with the guy that started Panic Fest? We did last year. I know. Let's do it again. Uh, you want to talk to him again? And you'll be like, hey, what's the deal? Oh, dude, I'm so going to bust his balls. If we do. <laughs> I'm going to bust him. I'm going to kick him right in the balls. I, I don't think Tim wants to come on after hearing that. <laughs> I'm not gonna kick him in the balls, yeah, dude. Come on, dude. I'm there. not that. I'm not that much of a dick. I mean, we don't we don't have that much power yet in this world. 
<laughs> not, not yet. Me one day. Right? Uh, I just want to get to the level of my life where I have fuck you money. That's all. That's all I want. You, you want to be like, oh, oh yeah, we're paying for your t- plane ticket to cons, so you and I can go talk shit on movies. Yeah, you know. No, I just i I want to be Howard Stern, and I don't mean like the point that I want to have like all the crazy lesbians making out on my freaking radio show. Yeah, yeah. I just want to be because Howard Stern's now at that level. They don't give a shit. Yeah, you he has be, no sh- no fucks given. Oh, you want to be able to do it. that? You want to be like, like, yeah, I'm still making money and seeing if I could choose you. Okay, I'm with you. Yeah, we'll yeah, sh- and you get it. Yeah, you get it. Would you want to be next door neighbors? Me and you next door neighbors. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, then we can connect our fences together. Yeah, yeah. We'll just... And then we can, like, we can put, like, a house in the backyard. Yeah. Where we put, like, that, that'll be our recording studio. Yeah, yeah, we'll have, like, a, yeah, a guest house that'll be our recording studio. <laughs> yeah, I'm down with this all day long. Yeah, we, what we do is we actually put it, like, halfway into your backyard and halfway into mine. So we can just... I just realized our, our graphic is still the <laughs> <laughs> guys playing. I, I just looked at it. All right. Anyway, right. Um, thank you, like, you guys for listening. You can find, you, you can find us online. Let's get out of here. You can find us online. We can find us online. We're on Facebook. We're on Facebook. We're on Facebook. We can find us online. We're on Facebook. 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 We're on Go ahead and send us an email at moviesunkpodcast at gmail.com or info at moviesunk.net. Uh, if you guys uh, are watching YouTube, go and subscribe, watch Facebook at the page. And anywhere you find podcasts, you find movies that don't suck and some that do. Neil, what do you do for small businesses? If you got a small business, we want to help you out. We want to make sure that you get your recognition out there. Send us some information. Send it to us anywhere that you heard Chris just mentioned, on Facebook, on whatever, Instagram, um, Twitter, whatever. We'll be more than happy to advertise your business, your friend's business, your mom's business, your Aunt Carol's business, even though you don't like her that much. <laughs> That's another episode of Movies Don't Suck and Something to Do. My name's Neil. And I'm Chris. And remember, guys, no matter how hard you try in life, remember, everybody likes to play games. Even if the paladin doesn't get your bard, you're going to make it up in the day because the warrior's always going to get the axe. Have a good night. Have a good night.